Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another MAMG Let's Play of Last Window. When we left off, it had been a couple episodes because, as you guys may know from my previous video, the save files were all messed up. I don't know what was going on with them, but I did go back and play through everything, so in order to treat you guys to a little something special, apparently there is a game over screen if Kyle fails to sell what he needs to sell for Ed. So this is exactly where I would have been if I had failed uh, both of the girls on this floor. And I actually went through and found out where the third person is that you could fail. So yeah, you know what? I may have been able to still succeed if, uh, you know, I failed those two. But right now, we're gonna go ahead and fail it because apparently there's a really funny game over screen that happens. And I'm curious to know how he gets fired or what's gonna happen here. So this guy here, out of all the people, it's this guy that you can potentially sell to. Mr. Hyde, what do you want? Have you got a moment? Now? I'm a little busy, actually. Um, there's something I want to show you. Yep, there we go. I've got some things I'd really like to show you. What are you talking about, Mr. Hyde? I'm really busy, you know. I don't take kindly to door-to-door -door -door salesmen. Come on, don't be like that. I've got some good stuff to sell. Why not take a look? I don't want any of your wares. You're such a pain coming here trying to sell me stuff. Just get lost. There we go. We failed. Charles looks angry as he returns to his room. Ugh, this isn't nearly as easy as I thought it would be. And then the pager just goes off immediately. It's my pager. Better head back to my room. He's like, heard you failed. 30 seconds ago. This isn't the day and age of the internet. How'd you find out? Seriously. I don't know why he found out so quick. But uh, yeah, this is going to be a very quick game over, to say the very least. Which is fine, it's just a little bonus for those of you who are patiently waiting for me to get caught back up. I don't know what happened, I don't know if my DS game is going to do that again, I hope not, because kind of kind of scares me. <laughs> it's okay though, we're going to keep on trekking forward, we're not going to let a little uh, system malfunction keep us from going. Alright, it's about time I gave it a call. You're fired! Click! Red Crown, how may I help you? It's me, Rachel. What's up? Ed has something he wants to talk about. Hold on, I'll pass you over. Hi, it's me. What do you got to talk to me about, Ed? I already told you before. I want you to get rid of some of the items you've got by selling to the other tenants. Yeah, about that. I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm not interested in your excuses. Listen up. I told you to go and sell some stuff to the tenants there. I didn't tell you to shove the stuff down their throats. Oh, did we get complaints? What does that mean? Am I supposed to make some sort of sense from that? Yes, you are. I just got a complaint from one of the tenants living there. Seems you've been trying to pressure them into buying stuff they don't want. Now I've got them biting my head off all over the phone. Not good for business, you know. Yeah, sorry about that. It just means I was super desperate, you know? I was very passionate about selling my wax and cleaner and spare lock. Looks like I overestimated you, Hyde. Sorry to have to break this to you, but you're refired. You're not the kind of salesman we need. You're fired. What? It's fired? No need to panic. I'll still be finding a new place to work. Come on, Ed. Can we talk about this? Goodbye, Hyde. <laughs> oh, no. <sighs> I'm back where I started. Looks like I'm fresh out of second chances with Ed. I don't want any of your junk. You're such a pain coming here trying to sell me stuff. Poor Kyle. It's not what I was trying to do. It was. We were trying to sell him stuff. That's it? <laughs> oh, no. Okay. So if I give up, is it going to take me back to the title screen? Because that would actually be fine. I'd 100% be okay with that. Okay, cool. So we can go back to the title screen and load the other save file that I have, um, which actually has progress. Well, we're talking to Frank, so we're going to continue talking to him. I think I'm where I left off. 
I believe. I tried to guesstimate the best I could. But I don't know how long this episode's going to be because I need to, um, I need to like end on a chapter so that way I can get back into a rhythm. So we'll see where we go. We'll just play it by ear. It's also way too late at night for me to be recording this. I don't know why I chose to wait so long, but that's not the point. The point is we need to talk to Frank and he's at the door. I love how I just closed the door on him and walked away. All right. You were the last person I expected to see. What do you want? Okay, so this is the same. All right, so I, this is a recap, I guess. Um, yeah, the tape. Yep, all right, sure, here you go. Have the tape back. And then we're going to... Get grilled by Frank about what we did because we're terrible people. But that's okay. We're gonna let him know that we listened to it. And, uh, we'll, we'll give him the exact same options that we did before. Because I don't know if it's going to give me a good or bad ending. But again, if it does, we'll just reload it. That's fine. Alrighty, yeah. <laughs> Why do you have my tape? I found it. Um, in the laundry. It technically was, but not after we took it out. I'm just saying. I'm curious what Frank's looking into, though. You know, he's a cop, we're a cop, we were a cop. Now we're a salesman, and we almost weren't a salesman. Okay, when Tony sent me the fourth floor yesterday, it said it had some business. Yep. Alrighty. He decided not to make an appearance, and we were there, and he's all suspicious because he's a cop. His cop sense is tingling. None, none of this is anything new for those of you who have just joined me in this episode. Hi! I don't know why you decided to pop in at episode like eight, seven, something like that. Um, but hey, you're more than welcome to be here. Kick up your feet. Grab a drink. I, I don't know. It's... My brain's not where it needs to be right now. Okay. Yeah, we listened to your tape. And he's trying to solve the murder. And he's all grumpy. So, we want to hear... Yes, we want to know what's going on. We need you to spill the beans, Frank. Alright, seems you haven't been able to read yourself or your detective senses. Sorry, I'm saving my voice acting for later on. M maybe. <laughs> Alrighty. So come on, tell me. I'll tell you straight. Stop pursuing me in my investigations. And cease trying to go after these connected to the crime. Okay, here we go. That's the question we needed. Awesome. So now, it's game time. Alright, let's do this. Who's connected to this crime? It seems you've not taken my advice, Mr. Hyde. Game over. Spit it out. Like, I'm too old to spit anything. Look at this photograph. Every time you do, it makes you laugh. It's a picture of a funeral. Yes, the funeral of the people who found Kathy McGrath's body. Well, that's good. I'm glad you keep that on you. I received the funeral photo. If you look really carefully, there's someone in the picture I'm sure you'll recognize. Mr. Hyde. I am forced to stop you from interfering any further. Therefore, I'd appreciate it if you could avoid hindering me. Do not obstruct my investigations any further. And stay away from the people you see in this picture. Okay, okay, I'll take it along. Hard to look at it. Uh, I'll take a long, hard look at the picture. Just one more thing I need to ask you, Mr. Raver. And that is? What can you tell me about Condor? You mean to say you don't know what Condor is? I wouldn't be asking if I did. I should repeat what I just said. Leave my investigations alone. That's all I have to say. Are you going to leave the picture with me? Okay, sure, I'll take it. Frank leaves the room. Um, yeah, let's look at the picture. Why do you leave it with us? So who's in it? It's not a puzzle, come on! What am I supposed to be looking for? That's Marie. Okay. Is, that's it? You're just gonna tell me that's Marie? Okay, who, how about this? This one. No? This one. This one. Uh, the tree. The children! No? What, what else? 
Um, okay, there's somebody here. Okay, got a couple of people here. Nothing? Nobody in the chains? Wait, what? Whoa. Rex? Oh! Hi! What's Rex doing in this photo? That's who we were looking for? Really? Okay. Marie Reve's in the picture. And not just her. Rex Foster's there, too. What possible connection could the two of them have had 13 years ago? And now it's 7 o'clock. Okay. Getting a little bit later, but not super late. I slump myself into my ancient sofa and drift off into my thoughts. An unsolved case. What hope do I have to reveal by looking- uh, what do I hope to reveal by looking into such an old case? Seven o'clock already. Is it bedtime? I better make a move. Wouldn't want to miss my chance for some more info. Exactly, there you go. Alright, let's bust a move, buddy. Yay! Kyle Hyde is back on the case. Huh? The door of room 203 is open. I can hear somebody's voice from inside. I know that voice. That dress looked good on you. I had a great time yesterday. After the voices stop, somebody leaves the room. <laughs> I'll see you soon. What? I'll wait at the same shop as before. Hey, Betty. Yeah, what's up with that? Betty? Why are you hanging out with Rex? Betty? Yes, Mr. Hyde? I'm sorry about before, Betty. You were a little out of order. But life's too short to bear grudges. I was kind of hoping you'd say that. I'll see you later, Mr. Hyde. J just a moment. What is it? I'm a little curious about the guy who left your room just now. Oh, you saw, did you? Yeah. His name's Rex. We know that. Got that part. We did our detecting. What's your connection with him, Betty? Connection? Are you and he an item or something? Mr. Hyde, I don't want to be rude, but you're beginning to sound like my dad. Her dad? But anyway, Rex is a regular customer at my shop. We've been out for dinner more times than I can remember, and sometimes go drinking, too. And recently, we decided to make a go of it and become a couple. Don't take this the wrong way, but you know the kind of guy he is, right, Betty? He's not exactly the... Are you gonna tell me he's dangerous? Actually, I, I was. You don't have to worry about me, Mr. Hyde. I know how to choose my men. Dangerous and lying. Rex has a strong personality isn't afraid to spend his cash, and knows how to treat a lady. He may be a bit rough around the edges, but he's lonely and a sucker for the soft touch. Trust me, Mr. Hyde, I know what I'm getting myself into. I could wrap him around my little finger, but there's no way he could do the same. No, I'm pretty sure he's using you. That's comforting. What does that mean? Lonely and a sucker for the soft touch, huh? Doesn't that describe you, Betty? Oh, I'm going back to my room. Betty finishes talking and does just that. What's that rat up to this time? I don't know. Let's go see. Maybe he's hanging out by the cafe again. He seems to like to go there, you know. Hang out in front of the door, wiretap the Christmas tree, just whatever, you know, tickles his fancy. I don't see him over here, though. Um, I did realize that I forgot about the uh, whole contest thing, so hopefully it's not a big deal. Yeah. I don't know what's gonna happen with that. <laughs> I think it's just like a bonus game. Time for me to check out Table B. Oh, that's right! We do need to do that. Hi! How's it going? Hey, Claire. Which one's Table B? It's the one the second closest to the kitchen. Th that's it? Thank you, or why do you want to know, or... Is this the kitchen? That doesn't look like a kitchen, that looks like an exit. There's the kitchen, so second closest to the kitchen. It's not that close to the kitchen, really. 
Table B, boom. The table showing its age, but it's been scrubbed to perfection. Oh, ah, there we go. There's something stuck under the table. What could this be? It looks like some sort of letter. I take the reward letter from underneath the table. It must have been written on an old-fashioned typewriter. It reads, The reward for finding the item is the truth of 25 years ago. You'll find part of the truth included here. The truth of 25 years ago? There's something else here. Looks like an extract from an old newspaper. The extract's from 1955 and reads, On December 17th, early in the morning, a body was discovered in a downtown parking lot. Near the city hall, the victim appears to have been shot. After initial forensic checks, it was determined that the man, the, the victim, a man in his 30s, bled to death after receiving a gunshot wound to the chest. The police believe that he was murdered elsewhere roughly two days before, and that he was moved to the parking lot soon after being murdered. My god, this is about my dad. Is this really part of the truth of 25 years ago? So the center of this letter is trying to say that, if I locate the Scarlet Star, I'll also be able to close the case surrounding my dad's death. Huh? Staring at the page, I notice that the T's are higher than the other letters. I wonder if this is the same as the original order sheet I received. Wow. Good eye. Good eye. I thought so. The T's are higher as well. That pretty much confirms that these two letters were typed on the same typewriter. Who would have written them? Somebody's dangling the truth of 25 years ago in front of my face. Who would do that? Most likely it's whoever sat in this seat today. Maybe Claire can shed some light on who that was. Claire, we got another question. Who sat at table B? Every single person who sat at table B, please. Claire, can I ask you something? Sure, what is it? Did anyone sit at that table today? Yeah, there was someone. Who was it? Let me think. Is it coming back to you? Oh, right. I remember both Charles and Dylan sitting there. Okay. There might have been other customers who sat there too, but I can't remember. Sorry. I see. But tell me, Mr. Hyde, why are you so interested? No reason, just curious. Just being a Kyle. Okay, if you say so. Claire finishes talking and moves away from me. Might be wise to have a chat with the both of them. Okay. Well, we know Dylan's on the third floor. Charles left, right? We met him for the first time in this episode. Not this episode that I'm filming, but this, I guess, chapter of the game. So where does he live? I'm gonna figure that out. Okay. So characters... We have Dylan, who's in 304, and Charles, who's in three oh, 305. Oh, that's Charles. Okay, who did we just meet? We just met somebody. We just met, was it Hugh? No, that wasn't Hugh. No, 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 no. Okay. I don't remember who we just met. Will, there it is. Okay, doesn't really matter, but yeah. That's who it was. Okay. So 304 and 305. You know what? Since I'm already at this menu, let's go ahead and save. Because I don't want the same thing to happen as before. Ugh, that was so annoying. I don't know what happened with my DS. It sucks. Sometimes with older games, I guess it is what it is, right? Alrighty. So, we gotta go up to the third floor. At least they're right next to each other. That helps out. Of course, I made Charles mad too. Ah, well, whatever. <laughs> we'll knock on this door anyways. Well, no, actually, I didn't make him mad because that was the bad, the game over ending. Hey, have you got a moment? Oh, Mr. Hyde. I've got something I want to ask you. Want to buy some stuff? <laughs> Did you take a trip to the cafe today? Yes, I did. And did you sit at table B near the counter? Yes, but why are you asking me about where I sat? So was it you, Charles? 
Did you stick the envelope on the other side of the table? I have no idea what you're talking about, Mr. Hyde. Please explain yourself. So you really have no idea. Please, Mr. Hyde. Do you have a reason to doubt what I'm telling you? Um... Eh... Not really. I just wanted to ask. Are you sure you're telling me the truth? How do you expect me to answer when I have no idea what you're talking about? So it wasn't you who stuck the table to- <laughs> Kyle, dude, drop it. How many times do I have to tell you I have no idea what you're saying? I see. Did you see anyone at the table before you sat there? Yeah, there was someone. Who was it? It was Dylan from 304. When I arrived at the cafe, he was already there. After he left that table, I sat down there. Do you understand, Mr. Hyde? I really don't know anything about any envelope. Yeah, I guess you don't. Sorry for getting on your case like that. I'm glad to see you finally seeing sense. Goodbye, Mr. Hyde. Charles goes back inside his room. So it must have been Dylan who placed the envelope under the table. I'm gonna get some answers from him. I don't think it was Dylan either. Honestly. I think it was just left there and they told you about it. It doesn't have to necessarily have been left today. You know? Huh? Room 306's door is open. Well, hello there, Mr. Hyde. Oh, it's you. This is the last place I'd expect to bump into you. The apartments where you live, although one floor above. What brings you out this way? Nothing much. Sometimes I come up to the third floor to call on people. Well then, that explains it. I had no idea you were on good terms with the residents on this floor. Tell me, it wouldn't be Dylan from 304 that you've come to see, would it? Maybe. What if it is? I hate to give you unwanted advice, Mr. Hyde, but you should keep your wits about you when dealing with him. What's that supposed to mean? He seems to have an unhealthy obsession with acquiring information from other tenants. His pretense is that he's doing work on behalf of Miss Patrice, but he takes advantage of this and tends to monitor the tenant's movements. I speak from experience, Mr. Hyde. I've seen his type before. I advise you to keep well away from him if you know what's good for you. Oh, but I'm sorry. Listen to me talking your ear off. I really must be going, Mr. Hyde. Farewell. Will moves away and heads down the stairs. Hmm. Seems kind of threatening. Hey, Mr. Hyde. Huh? I noticed you were chatting to Mr. White just now. Yeah, that's right. What were you talking about? Nothing, just greeting each other. Really? It sounded like a very long greeting then. You nosy little dude. Yeah, we don't see each other that often. Are you sure that's all you did? As far as I knew, you and Mr. White didn't even know each other before. It just seems strange that you spend so much time with the person you barely knew. Listen, Dylan. Were you trying to eavesdrop again? Eavesdrop? You have a nasty habit of being around when people are talking. How many times have you been conveniently located nearby while I'm having a conversation? It's happened once too often for my liking. It's... it's not like that. I think it's time you came clean, Dylan. I haven't got anything to come clean about. You really expect me to believe that? Well... Speak up. I can't hear you. I, I really haven't got anything to tell you. Spit it out. Now. Why are you trying to listen in on my conversations? Please, tell me what you think I've done, Mr. Hyde. I don't take too kindly to be accused without good reason. You what? <laughs> Dylan looks dumbstruck. No, he just looks dumb as he returns to his room. Okay? Can I knock on the door again? Dylan! Who is it? I can hear Dylan's voice ring out from within the room. It's me, Kyle Hyde. I don't want anything to do with you. Dylan, we need to talk. Now open this door. Go away and leave me alone. <laughs> Dylan! Open the door! Dylan! 
I hear footsteps of somebody approaching from down the hallway. Will you kindly keep the noise down? I mean, why would you want to make such a noise outside a person's room at this hour? It's like 7 o'clock, dude! You're just being a nuisance to everyone. I've got business to take care of with Dylan. But he refuses to open the door. And what is this business you have with him then? Has he done something? It's between me and him. Huh? Suddenly, the door to 304 swings open. Oh, hello, Mr. Hyde. I didn't know you were still here. What do you mean you didn't know? It's nothing for you to worry about, Mr. Raver. My buzzer's busted and I can't always hear when a guest arrives. I see. So it was the buzzer. You spend so much time fixing other people's things. Maybe you've neglected your own. Frank makes his way back to his room. Come in. We can talk inside. About time, too. Interesting. Whew, we're gonna have to grill Dylan. I hope this goes well. I really hope this goes well, because... I don't know what kind of information we're gonna find out. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit crazy, to say the least. Oh, Dylan. What kind of secrets are you hiding? It might even be stuff he doesn't even know that he shouldn't know, you know? Alright, Dylan. Listen, Dylan. What do you want with me? Why'd you suddenly decide to open the door and let me in? Simple. I didn't want Mr. Raber to start jumping to the wrong conclusions. That's why. You know he used to be a detective. He'd just go around poking his nose in. I've noticed that you use the word detective a lot when we talk, Dylan. Do I? can't say I've noticed. It may only be a hunch, but are you fixated on me and Mr. Raver because you're really into cops and the lifestyle that goes with it? Exactly! Then maybe you'd like to tell me why you're so keen on monitoring the other tenants. It's natural. Everyone likes to know what other people get up to. That's all it is. I'm not some sort of stalker, you know. Yeah, I don't know, dude. Dylan. You went to Lucky's Cafe today, right? Yeah, I went down there. So you'll know all about the letter I found there, too. Letter? What letter? The one that was attached to the other side of Table B. Oh, right, that letter. That letter? So he does know about it. Just as I suspected. Tell me everything you know about that letter. I don't know anything about it. Don't lie to me. You put it there, didn't you? You think I put it there? You bet I do. It's <laughs> so funny. Listen to yourself and your stories. My stories? Yeah, they're amusing. So, what did the envelope have inside it? Was it some sort of clue to something? Dylan. Come on, Mr. Hyde. What did it have inside? You can tell me. I can keep a secret. Come on. Uh... Eh, eh, mm, no. Please, Mr. Hyde. Can't you just give me a hint? You can't tell me something about what you found, can't you? Give it a rest, Dylan. I've had enough of with you. We're through talking. Huh? What did I do? I must have made a mistake. I'm sorry I gave you the wrong impression. Didn't mean to get you excited over nothing. I'll catch you later, Dylan. That's just like how the others act. They treat me like I'm some sort of idiot. They just think I don't know anything. Dylan? But they're wrong, Mr. Hyde. I know lots of things. Such as? Ah, good! I played him like a fiddle! Like I knew there was a letter stuck under that table. Ha ha ha! So you do know something. Who left it there? Tell me. Sorry. Even I don't know that. Shame. If you knew that, maybe we could have talked some more. Mr. Hyde. Why are you so keen on finding out about that letter anyway? Forget it, Dylan. We got no more to discuss. The letter may not have a sender, but I know it didn't come from you. Huh? The letter didn't have a sender? Mr. Hyde, are you telling me that you received an unmarked letter too? What are you trying to say? 
I'm trying to say, did you leave? Did you receive a threatening letter as well? He knows something. I'm sure of it. Now we're getting somewhere. Oh, I'm so glad. I bet you if I spilled the beans to Dylan, it wouldn't have ended well. Okay, let's do this. Who's being threatened? Maybe you should just forget I said anything. Too late for that, Dylan. Is somebody in this apartment being threatened? <sighs> I didn't want to tell anybody. Who is it? I can't say. Tell me. It's... it's... It's her. Miss Patrice. She's being threatened? Yeah, that's right. Why would somebody want to threaten her? I haven't got a clue. But I can tell you for a fact, somebody's doing just that. There I go again, running off my mouth. Now what am I gonna do? I really didn't want to tell anyone about the threat. Oh, it's too late now, buddy. Kyle has caught scent of the scent. Yep, that's it. <laughs> I'm begging you, Mr. Hyde. Please, don't breathe a word of this to anyone. I won't. You're just gonna have to breathe more to me. How did you know about the threat to Max? I came across it one day. Came across it how? I'd gone to Miss, Miss Patrice's room to fix something. And there was a phone call. I can tell you that the phone call in question was definitely threatening. It only lasted a short time before cutting off, too. Miss Patrice's face turned pale and her hands began to shake. From that point on, I made it my job to look over her. It was also from that time that unmarked letters and packages began to arrive. Not long after that phone call, Miss Patrice had made her decision to sell the place. So, does even Mags know about uh, that you were there to witness the threat? God, I can't read. Has she mentioned it at all? I don't think she registered that I was there. I just kept quiet as a mouse. Hey. Um, you think it's a game? Do you think it'd be bad for you if she knew? Maybe? Do you think it'd be bad for you if she knew? Of course it did. If she knew that I overheard that phone call, she certainly stopped asking me to perform all those little maintenance jobs around here. Not only that, I'm sure she had made me leave way before we all vacate. She's that kind of person. I know plenty of her secrets, Mr. Hyde, and I'm not just talking about the threat. Oh God, Dylan, buddy. Oh, bless your poor little soul. What kind of things do you know? Stuff about the past? I could tell you things, Mr. Hyde. Things as Miss Patrice has passed. Then enlighten me. Everyone has a past, all right. But hers is more interesting than most. What? 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 I know you don't exactly trust me, Mr. Hyde, but... I can assure you, I did not send you any unmarked letters. I want you to believe me. I'm not the sort of person who goes around threatening others. Is that so? It is. If you think it'll help you solve the mystery, I'll tell you about Miss Patrice's secrets. On one condition, though. You share with me what was in that letter you found. So, have we got a deal? I'll think about it. I got somewhere to be. Really? I'm making my way out of Dylan's room. Where, where are we going? What? Why'd Dylan have to go and set me off with all that talk about secrets and stuff? And Mags. Could she be connected in some way? Connected to the incident that happened all those years ago? I think it's time I gather my thoughts about all that's happened. Oh, so it's time for a recap already, huh? December 22nd. Ed woke me up with a phone call in the morning. He said he was willing to take me back to work for the Red Crown, but on one condition. What did he want me to do? Sell items. Uh... No, no, sell items to two tenants. All right, that's what he said. He told me to sell items to two people in this building. They get them on the phone. Once I completed this task, I called to let him know. I also took the opportunity to discuss the mysterious order she'd ever received. Ed eventually agreed to let me pursue the order and try to locate the Scarlet Star. He went on to tell me the reason why the police had reopened my dad's case. He said the case had been reopened due to a connection with the crime syndicate called Condor. No, Nile. Right, it was called Nile. Nile was a crime syndicate Bradley was investigating undercover four years ago. 
exactly how this syndicate was connected to my dad's death was something that neither I nor Ed could imagine. When Frank came to collect the cassette tape I got from Tony, I asked him why he was so keen on investigating what happened 13 years ago. Instead of answering, he gave me a picture and said to stay away from the people in it. I recognized two people in the photo. One was Marie, and the other was Rex Foster. Right. It was a picture showing a scene at a funeral. There was a much younger Rex among the attendees. Seems that Rex knew about Marie 13 years ago. And that's one of the things I intend to investigate from now on. On the message left on my answering machine, the recipient of the item was revealed. For information on the reward, I was told to look under the table B in Lucky's Cafe. When I did so, I found that somebody had attached an envelope under the table. In addition to the letter that explained what the reward was, there was something else. The other item was... Um, old newspaper extract. Right. There was an extract from old, old newspaper inside the envelope. It contained the stories surrounding the case where my dad was killed. The letter said that the reward for finding the item was the truth of 25 years ago. This was an offer that certainly got me thinking. When I reread the letter, I noticed something unusual about the typography. I applied some pressure to Dylan when asking him about the unmarked letter. He said that he didn't know anything about it. He went on to say that there was somebody in the building who received the threat. The person who received that threat was... Mags? Right. Dylan told me that someone had issued a threat towards Max. Dylan also said that in exchange for information on the unmarked letter, he would share some more of the secrets he knew about Miss Patrice. I wasn't ready to commit to anything at the moment, so I left. Now there are even more mysteries surfacing in this building. I have to deliver the missing item to whoever is responsible for Kathy McGrath's murder. The reward for finding it is the truth of 25 years ago. I can't stop wondering about the sender of that order and what they really want. What am I going to find out by unraveling this mystery? Who in the apartment had a part to play in these events that happened in the past? What little I managed to put together in my head's come apart. I have to start again and try to uncover the whole truth behind what happened 25 years ago. Okay. Cool. So we ended the chapter. That is good. I know this video is going to be a little bit short and I'm sorry about that. But I think I'm actually going to go ahead and leave this episode right here. Um, because, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a long day. I know, that's a terrible excuse. But, uh, you guys may have seen the, the times on the, on the save sheet, or on the save files here. It's like, yeah, 1.38 a.m. And I still have to edit and render and get the video uploaded so that it's up in time for the day that you guys watch it. Which, it's going to be today, like, same day. But, uh, we'll get, we'll get through this little scene here. But after that, we'll go ahead and call it a day, and then we will get back on track. I'm going to try and do one chapter a day, or one chapter per episode. It just depends on how long they get. So yeah, forgive me. I'm sorry. It's been a crazy couple weeks. We're on chapter six, though, so that's not too bad. Typewriter, huh? Oh, cool. December 23rd, Tuesday morning. I'm woken up by the sound coming from the TV. And that was tomorrow's weather. Huh? What's that noise? Ugh. Must have fallen asleep in front of the TV. Now for today's special feature. We take a look at the jewelry robberies that rocked LA two decades ago. It was apparent that the crime ring was stealing jewels and selling them on the black market, but the group itself vanished from the face of the earth some 13 years ago. The LAPD are investigating the current spate of jewelry robberies in the area and considering the possibility that they may be connected to these past robberies. This is Robert Harrison for 5 News, signing off. Okay, bye. I guess? No? Power? Okay. As I try to pull myself out of bed, I feel the alcohol still lingering in my stomach. It all comes back to me. I remember about talking to Dylan, then being invited to the bar by Tony for a few drinks. So I try to get my thoughts from the day before in order. I make my way over to the window and open the blinds. The brightness flooding in through the tiny window sets my room aglow. I lean against the window with my eyes half closed, my body bathed in light. As I gradually open them, I see the familiar backdrop come into focus before me. It's a shame that my days of seeing the first thing in the morning are numbered. Now that I think about it, my mom must have seen a similar sight. After my dad was killed, on the morning mom and I planned to leave this town. 
She stood in front of the window in the room she'd once shared with Dad. She said nothing, just stared into the distance. I splashed a couple handfuls of water onto my face. Then threw on some clothes. <sighs> my throat's so dry. Can't believe I got drunk on a Monday night. I'm such a bum. There's only one remedy for this. A trip to the cafe. Okay, so that's where I'm gonna leave this episode here. I'm gonna go ahead and save so that I'm good. I really, really hope that we've passed all the speed bumps and that the uh, recording process can be smooth as whatever is smooth. Yeah, my brain's not working. But you guys know what I'm talking about. Either way, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for your support. I will continue to play this game until the very end, so don't worry about that, and we will continue on in the next episode. So until then, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed. I'll see you guys on the next MAMJ. Let's play. Oh, hi, it's me. <laughs> Ed. So you're still sleeping, huh? Yeah, well, I was. I see. I guess this won't interest you enough to get your lazy butt out of bed anyway. Hey, hang on. I thought I'd extend the hand of friendship and give you another chance. Maybe I'll have to reconsider, seeing as you can't even bo be bothered to get out of bed. Have a nice life, Hyde. Ed, wait. Yeah? You're right. Someone who sleeps until 10 on a Monday shouldn't be given a second chance.